Good morning po, welcome po kayo sa ating pong Adult Sunday School. Ngayon pong huling Sunday ng buwan ng Pebrero taong uh, 2021. Tomorrow is March already. Okay, ang bilis ng araw natin. Okay, welcome po sa lahat maging sa mga nanonood sa kanilang mga tahanan. Happy Lord's Day to everyone. Manalain po tayo. Aming Ama, kami po yung nagpapasalamat sa inyo for once again allowing us to open our eyes in a beautiful morning. Uh, ito po ay indikasyon ng inyong nagpapatuloy na plano sa aming mga buhay. Though we live imperfectly and often uh, disobey your will, uh, salamat sapagkat ang inyong kabutihan ay nakabase sa inyong sarili ang inyong katapatan ay nakabase sa kung sino kayo at hindi dahil sa amin. Because if that is the case, then you will change and you will desert us. Pero salamat po sapagkat ang iyong relationship sa amin bilang inyong mga anak, bilang iyong iglesia is something that revolves around your person. At iyan ay isang bagay na we often miss as Christians and sometimes nagiging cause ito ng aming self-pity, aming discouragement. Uh, we lose heart whenever we do what is wrong, whenever we do what is sinful. Pero salamat because you're not a God who changes but a God who is never changing. And because of that, meron po kaming hindi guguho na pagtitiwala, na pag-asa uh, na nagmumula sa iyo. Salamat po because today is your day. Salamat po sapagkat hinayaan mo kami na magkaroon ng malakas na mga pangatawan at kami ay ibinangon mo at uh, hinayaan mo makapagbiyahe. Marami sa amin ay nandito sa aming physical gathering and you saved us from uh, any incident sa aming uh, paglalakbay. Maraming salamat po because uh, more than our physical strength is our determination, our willingness, the strength of our will to go here and to stop everything na ginagawa namin at kami ay Magbubuklat ng inyong salita together as a church. We will sing your word together as a church. We will pray together as a church. And we will be listening to the teaching and preaching of your word together as a church. Though some of us are restricted because of this quarantine. And uh, nasa loob at nananatili sa kanilang mga tahanan. Though uh, some of us are staying at home together with other believers. Some of them are members of our church. Salamat Panginoon sapagkat we have this technology, internet, and we can uh, do live stream. Bagamat hindi ito talaga ang normal sa inyong church, ay ginagawa namin ito temporarily because of this quarantine. Sana hindi po kami masanay na merong live stream sapagkat hindi ito ang uh, hindi ito alternative sa aming pong uh, sa design niyo po sa church which is to not forsake the gathering. Salamat po Panginoon for the freedom in our country. Kung saan pwede po kaming magtipo ng ganito despite of uh, the so-called pandemic. Salamat po Panginoon for allowing us to Uh, open our Bibles in public to declare our faith in public without the fear of being apprehended or even being uh, restricted. Salamat Panginoon sapagkat Ikaw ang nagbibigay sa amin ng ganitong klase ng opportunity. And this is something that we cannot really compare with other forms of gathering because you promise that your spirit will be with us in a very special way. And that makes the gathering of your people a church. Salamat po, Panginoon, because we believe that all throughout this day, from this morning hanggang mamayang hapon, you will be good to us. 
Ibibigay niyo po sa amin ang mga katotohanan ng inyong mga salita. Tuturuan niyo po kami. Kami po ay babaguhin ninyo sa pamagitan ng inyong mga salita. And you will change us for the better. Only Christians can become better because we have the Spirit dwelling in us and changing us, sanctifying us, making us holy every day. We acknowledge our sins, O Lord. Ang uh, kasalanan ng aming isip, ng aming puso, ng aming mga salita, ng aming mga kilos. Walang segundo o anumang moment sa aming buhay ang lumilipas without us thinking, saying things, doing things, behaving untainted with sin. And we ask for your forgiveness. Prepare us, O God, as we meet you today. Prepare us, O God, as we serve you today. Help us, O God, to love each other today as you intended it in your word. Dinadalangin din po namin, Panginoon, that you bless Pastor George as he ministers your word in our, uh, to our brethren in uh, Silang Cavite, Holiness in Jesus Christian Church, led by our brother, Pastor Dong. Ano po ang... Uh, Inihandang salita ay maging pagpapala at hamon sa kanila, especially in this very trying moment in their life as a church. Ingatan niyo rin po siya as uh, he ministers to us this afternoon. Ingatan niyo po yung mga kapatid namin who are still on the way. Perhaps some of them are contemplating if they will be going to church or not. Sana po tulungan niyo silang piliin ang kagustuhan ninyo, which is to get up, prepare themselves, and to go to the church and to worship with your people. Ang lahat ang itidalangin namin sa iyo, Panginoon, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So let us all stand as we sing a Beautiful Savior All My Days.
Okay. Maraming salamat po. What a beautiful song reminding us. You can all be seated. Thank you. Ang awit na ito pinapaalala sa atin who our Lord Jesus Christ in so many ways, but it's not really a comprehensive uh, description of who the Lord is. No? But it's a good one. And de pagpapatuloy po natin ang ating discussion sa series na ito. Uh, we've come a long way. Medyo matagal na rin itong series na ito. But honestly, I would like to tell you as early as now that we are just halfway through <laughs> this uh, particular series. There's so many, many things. I'm uh, getting most of the topics from the book. I, I've been quoting to you ever since. Pero, alam nyo, as you study a topic about, about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, hindi mo may iwasan that you will discover many things and you want to share many things. So that is what is happening. Ay, kita nyo, uh, nag expand yung mga lessons uh, intended only for one uh, teaching session. Pero okay lang naman yun, di ba? Hindi naman tayo nag -aapura. We're not on a time limit uh, here at church. So we have all the time in the world to discuss this. And we love to do it. And we will continue to do it. So mag-review lang po tayo no, sa ating uh, mga diniscuss. Napuputol yung ating screen ano, for some reasons. Uh, Ito po yung uh, dalawa sa mga mahalagang point na diniskas natin previously. Number one, the Lord Jesus controlled His emotions perfectly because He obeyed His Father consistently. So remember, ang topic natin uh, in this particular lesson in the past was about the Lord Jesus Christ and His emotions. He was a true human being. Siya ito totoong tao. Uh, hindi siya nag-anyong tao lamang o nagkunya-kunyari ang tao lamang. He was a real human being. Katulad natin ang mga totoong tao. The only difference is he was not a sinner like us. Ganun pa man, hindi ibig sabihin na uh, because he was without sin, eh, that's the reason why he was able to avoid sinning in his emotions. Inemphasize ko sa inyo sa conclusion natin ng lesson na yan. Ang Panginoong Heso Kristo ay nagkatawang tao not only to become our Savior but to leave us an example of what it means to become a real human. In other words, ang Panginoong Heso Kristo nung siya ay nagkatawang tao, pinapakita niya sa atin, ito yung talagang disenyo ng Diyos sa isang tao. Diba? Uh, Adam and Eve fell and they failed dito sa disenyo ng Diyos in creating them and the last Adam came yan ang Panginoong Yeso Kristo giving us the example of what it means ang ibig sabihin ng maging totoong tao ganap na tao at dito pinapakita niya sa atin sa kanyang halimbawa na nagawa niyang kontrolin ng kanyang emotions perfectly because of his obedience to his father Jesus avoided sinning with his emotions by constantly putting the will of his Father over his own. Yun ang isa sa mga iniwanang halimbawa ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. There's no other way of avoiding sin maliban dito. Obedience to the Father over our own will. And di ba, yun naman ang dalas, madalas na dahilan kung bakit we sin because we decide to obey our own will. Mas sinusunod natin yung sarili nating kagustuhan and ang resulta na, of course, we disregard the will of the Father. Alam natin yung kalooban ng Ama. We read the Bible. Di ba? We, we try to live out the Bible. Pero the moment na sinunod natin ang gusto natin over kung ano yung gusto ng Ama, we will eventually fall into sin. Magkakasala talaga tayo. Ang Panginoon, ginawa niya yung other way. Di ba? And that is obeying the Father over His own. He sacrificed. He deliberately uh, gave up His own uh, volition to follow His own will. Bagamat alam natin that his will was perfect. Diba? Kasi wala naman siyang kasalanan eh. Nung nagkatawang tao ang Panginoong Yeso Cristo, he was without sin. Pero tinan nyo, no? kahit ang Panginoong Yeso Cristo, walang kasalanan, kasama ng kanyang will as a human person, 
he still decided to submit to the will of his father. Why? To leave us an example. Not only, of course, ang ultimate reason nun is to become our perfect rep representative, pero yung implication nun, stag staggering. Kasi hiniwanan niya tayo ng gano'n ang ibig sabihin ng pagiging masunurin. Secondly, the will, or the Lord Jesus Christ was able to obey the will of the Father consistently because He submitted to the control of the Holy Spirit completely. O, dito na naman, makikita natin isang katotohanan about the Lord Jesus Christ. Though siya ay perfect, sinless, and He can do whatever He wanted to do because He's God. Pero dito, makikita nyo that nagawa niya ang... Uh, Sundin ang kalooban ng kanyang ama ng walang kapintasan sapagkat sumunod siya sa patnubay at kontrol ng banal na espiritu ng ganap. The human nature of Jesus derived its ability to do everything that pleases His Father from the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, that included even His power to do supernatural things. He was a true human. Tandaan natin, nung nandito siya sa mundo, He was, sabi ng mga theologians, in His humiliation stage. And a part of that is, diba, He voluntarily surrendered. Even His prerogative over His own supernatural power. He allowed the Spirit to control Him. And isa, isa ko po sa inyo during that time, yung mga instances sa buhay ni Jesus, our Lord, kung saan nakita natin ang napakalinaw na ebidensya na ang banal na Espiritu ang sinusunod niya. Sa kanyang uh, buhay, uh, in, his, uh, in the attempt of Satan to tempt Him, di ba? to sin, sa kanyang uh, paggawa ng mga miraculous uh, things. He allowed the Spirit to lead in His ministry, empowered by the Spirit. Ikita niya yan, ano? that's the secret. Diba? No other way of obeying God aside from allowing the Spirit to control us. Yung sinasabi ni Apostle Paul sa Ephesians 5, Be filled with the Spirit. Be continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Napakagandang topic nito, no? But this is just a summary, a review. Uh, hindi na natin ito tatalakayan pa in much detail. So let's go to our topic this morning. Christ, our true friend. Okay? Ito topic natin this morning. And uh, again, this is another topic na pwede natin i-develop into multiple topics, multiple, multiple series. Pero I've decided to just limit it into one kasi masyado na ngang umahaba yung ating series. So, katulad ng mga dati natin ginagawa, we will be uh, uh, discussing this topic around a truth. We can enjoy the highest and truest form of friendship with the Lord Jesus. Ito yung isang aspeto ng ating pagiging Kristiyano that we often not forget but neglect. The Jesus, our Lord, is also our truest friend. Siya ang pinakatotoo nating kaibigan. Iba lang sa Reformed kasi. <laughs> uh, we are known for being so doctrinal in everything. Even uh, diba, sa belief natin about God, it's so, we put, we put the Lord Jesus Christ in a very exalted position. Of course, that is correct. Kaya lang, ang problema, we put Him in that highest position that He could not go down diba, and be with us in the day-to-day -day living. As Christians. E sobrang taas ng Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Hindi, wala na siya. Hindi na siya makababa. Hindi na natin siya. Hindi na natin ma-experience yung maraming katotohanan patungkol sa kung sino siya 
sa ating mga personal na buhay sa pang-araw-araw. And this is one of those that Jesus, though He is Lord, though He is God, He is our friend. Kaibigan natin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. No friendship between humans is free from the poison of sin. That's one thing I would, I would like to say in preliminary about this topic that we're going to discuss. Totoo, tayo mga tao, we love to have friendships. I don't know of anyone who doesn't have a friend. Siguro yung iba, sabi nila, they don't have a human friend, but they have a, a pet, an animal friend. Sabi nila, ano? So, lahat ng tao may friend. No, lahat ng tao, because it's built in, in the human nature that God created that we have relationships. Of course, hindi lang naman relationships ng marriage, ang pinag-uusapan natin doon, nang nilikha ng Diyos ang tao as relational beings, kasama na din yung pagkakaroon ng mga kaibigan. But, lagi nating tatandaan, after the fall of Adam and Eve, no friendship between humans is free from the poison of sin. Sin left no part of our humanity uncorrupted. Sin affected our nature, not just our bodies. Itandaan natin, no? yung kasalanan, hindi, kahit Christian tayo, hindi lang yung katawan na ito ang makasalanan. Di ba? Ang, ang ating pagiging tao ang makasalanan. It's who we are. No? Ang nature natin ang makasalanan. Therefore, no part of this person no part of you, no part of me is without sin. Lahat. That includes our desire and our ability to establish relationships with other people. Tinan niyo yung mga verses na ito sa uh, New Testament describing to us how pervasive ang uh, epekto ng kasalanan sa new human nature. Dito sa Romans chapter 1, verse 21, for although they knew God, the Apostle Paul speaking, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Take note. Ang kasalanan, dinungisan, ginawang marumi ang ating pag-iisip at ginawang mangmang ang ating mga puso. So mind, both mind and heart, affected by sin. So that means the entire person is affected by sin, yung buong pagkatao natin. Diba? And then, pag pinag-aralan nyo pa yung mga susunod na chapter, the Apostle Paul uh, explained that itong katotohanan na to, which is inside of us, goes outside. How? Sa pamagitan ng paggamit ng ating mga katawan sa kasalanan. So, hindi lang katawan ang makasalanan, kundi na, nasa loob natin na tayo yung makasalanan. Diba? Another passage, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. I barely see it here. So, sana nakikita nyo maayos. Now, this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. There you have it again. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. Kita nyo, the two major um, part of humanity the mind and the heart, tainted with sin, corrupted, futile. Eh, that's man in his sins. Yan tayo bilang mga makasalanan. Diba? Lahat ng bahagi na ating pagkatao ay nadungisan ng kasalanan. So ano implication nito, mga kapatid? We lack the capability to establish the ideal friendship. Gusto natin may BFF, di ba? best friend forever. And marami tayong ideals of what it means to become a friend, what it means to have a friend, what a friend should be, and so on and so forth. But wag natin kakalimutan, because of this sinfulness 
of all of us, Christians included, we cannot establish ideal friendships. Observation lang po, no? Re regarding this. Close, same-sex friendship is not free from misinterpretation. Diba sa mundo ngayon, marami mga rules, diba? You cannot be a friend with an opposite sex and do not develop feelings with each other. Diba? Sabi nila, eh, pag ang lalaki at babaeng best friend, hindi pwede hindi mafo-fall ang isa sa kanila o hindi sila magfo-fall sa isa't isa and uh, would want a relationship other than friendship. Diba? Ganun ang kaisipan ng mga tao ngayon. Eh. Kaya pag ang best friend ay lalaki at babae, sabihin nila, oh, may gusto ang isa dyan dun sa isa. Tinan niya, diba? Kasalanan yun eh. We misinterpret everything. We judge everything differently. Another thing, same sex, male to male, female to female. It's not free from misinterpretation. In fact, they're actually, or they're often seen now as an expression of same-sex attraction or even homosexuality. Pag lalaki at lalaki ang best friend, sasabihin isa doon bakla. Pag babae at babae ang best friend, sasabihin isa doon tomboy. See? Ganun ang, ganun ang isip at puso ng taong makasalanan. Pero hindi ko sinasabi na hindi nangyayari yun. It's even happening or yung close same-sex friendship is even misapplied, di ba? Ano ibig sabihin? Others use friendship to feed their sinful affections. Hindi natin maalis yan, di ba? Yung, ibang, yung iba, gusto nila maging close dun sa lalaki, gusto nila maging close dun sa lalaki na yun sapagkat mayroon silang same-sex attraction. Hindi ko didiscussin ito, pero it is my belief that same-sex attraction is sin. Kasi sa reform circle ngayon, they are defending that same-sex attraction is not sin. For me, it's sin. And I can defend it. Now, hindi lang yun. Diba? Because of this, sometimes men na may best friend na men, female na may best friend na female, they fall into the temptation of kissing and hugging while lusting for their friends. Alam mo yun, yung yakap-yakap, kiss-kiss no? tayo, best friend naman tayo, pero yun, alam mo yun, iba, the sinfulness of their hearts and their minds use that to feed their lust. Ganun katindi. Gusto ko, pinapakita ko lang po sa inyo to, kasi totoong nangyayari ito. Hindi nyo na nai, siguro nakikita nyo lang sa pelikula yan, no? Pero totoong nangyayari ito sa buhay. Because of this sinfulness of man, this corruption. But that is not how God intended friendship. Hindi ganun. Di ba? How? Man was created not only to have friendships, but to grow through his friendships. It is common grace to have friends. And this common grace benefits us greatly when used properly. Yan yung ibig sabihin sa point na yan. So, gusto natin may friends tayo, opposite sex, the same sex, because that's common grace, that's God blessing humanity with relationships other than marriage. Di ba? Eh, mga single people, you should not be alone saying that you're lonely because you're single. We should not be lonely because we do not have a spouse why? Because we should have friends. And that friendship should benefit us and should help us greatly in our growth as a person, as a Christian, when used properly. Pagtama ang paggamit natin sa ganitong klase ng relationship. Another thing na gusto kong sabihin, only the Lord Jesus Christ can provide the perfect friendship we long for. The, the ideal friendship na gusto natin is something that only the Lord Jesus Christ can offer. It's something na ang Panginoong Iso Kristo lang ang pwedeng magbigay sa atin. We can experience it truly. We can experience it to the fullest. Friends, no? Brothers and sisters, 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible gives us clear distinct descriptions of an ideal friend. Hindi lang ang Biblia para sa doctrine, no? About the gospel, but it also shows us many beneficial principles about human relationships, marriage included, diba? Relationship inside the home, parents to their children, outside the home, in the church, even in the workplace. The Bible is full of principles covering all of those types of relationships, and this include even friendship. Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 is one of the well-known diba, na passages. Abijan, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Another is Proverbs 18, 24. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So, marami pa actually, hindi lang yan mga verses. Pero ito yung gusto kong sabihin as implication. This kind of friendship is exceptional but never unachievable. A friend loves at all times. Kasi ang totoo, even the best of our friends diba, will desert us. Na-experience yan mismo ng ating Panginoong Isokristo. Diba, though he has this group of disciples, meron siyang inner circle of disciples closest to his heart. And one of those was Peter. <laughs> diba? And yet, alam natin that Peter denied him three times before his crucifixion. So, ibig sabihin, even that friend that loves at all times can sometimes deny that they know us. There are friends who stick closer than a brother, of course. But there are friends, the best of them, will sometimes choose to stay away from us. Diba? Ayaw na nilang maki... Uh, salamuha sa atin, bakit madadamay sila sa anumang bagay na nangyari sa atin? Diba? Masamang bagay. Diba? Uh, for instance, you fell into a scandal and you are a very close, close friend. Diba? Recently, na, napapanood ninyo sa YouTube, nababasa ninyo sa mga articles, ang scandal ni Ravi Zacharias. And he has a ministry, our ZIM. Maraming ano yun, maraming uh, branches all over the world. Pero sumabog yung balita about his sexual misconduct while he was still alive. Many of those ministries, di ba? Separated from this group. Ayaw na nila, naghiwalay na sila sa RZIM because of the scandal. That happens. But they're supposed to be friends because they're all Christians and they have one aim and that is to spread the good news and to defend the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and so on and so forth. Pero nung dumating yung scandal, ayaw na nila. <laughs> that happens, di ba? O nasan yung friends that stick closer than a brother? Pero sinasabi ko, bagamat Exceptional talaga yung magkaroon ng ganitong klase ng friend. Hindi ko sinasabing walang ganyan. Meron na human friend. Diba na? I don't, I don't know if you found that human friend aside from your spouse that will stick to you until death. Hindi ko alam kung nakakita na kayo ng friend that will love you at all times. Alam nyo, kung meron kayong ganyan, i-treasure nyo yan. That's exceptional. But, pero ang point ko dito, every biblical description of friendship becomes a reality in Jesus Christ. Though we do not have a f human friend that loves at all times, though we do not have a friend who sticks closer than a, fr a brother, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our friend who sticks closer than a brother. He is our friend who loves at all times. Diba? Totoo, we can have them with fellow men, but imperfectly. Only Jesus can be our perfect friend. 
is Jesus your perfect friend? Yan ang question. Kaibigan mo ba si Jesus ngayon? Siya ba ang pinakamatalik mong kaibigan? Sometimes, yung misconception natin about this truth, tinatry nating ma-achieve through other means. Di ba? Ano ibig sabihin? We want to look for a perfect human friend because Jesus is there in heaven. Di ba? Can He see me when I cry? Di ba? Yan yung mga question. Eh. Can, he, can He listen to me pagka nag, gusto kong magreklamo sa nangyayari sa buhay ko? Andun siya sa langit. He eh. should be far from us. Yun ang misconception ng marami even reformed people. Pero sinasabi ng Bible that He is our closest friend. We can, we can experience the ideal friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So yung hinahanap natin, pwede natin may experience with Him. You can cry to Him all you want. At alam mo maganda, we can cry to the Lord Jesus Christ all we want and He will not get weary. Hindi siya mapapagod. He can listen to us all we want. And He will not say, naantok na ako, tulog na tayo. Oh, meron akong appointment, next time na lang ulit. No! Pwede natin gawin sa Panginoon yun. Kahit anong oras, kahit sa ang lugar, kahit anong situation sa buhay. Ito matindi. Diba? We look for a friend who will stay with us at all times, even in those times na parang the world is against us. We cannot find a friend like that perfectly. But Jesus can! Diba? Ano sabi ni Apostle Paul? Everyone deserted me, but the Lord stayed with me and helped me. Ha? Ah, pwede natin ma-experience lahat yun sa Panginoong Yeso Kristo. And we are not benefiting from this truth because we, I don't know, if we refuse it or we neglect it, it's our fault. Kung hindi natin na-enjoy ito na friendship with Jesus. Okay? So, discuss natin tong Our Lord, Our Closest Friend. Yun yung ginalag- nilagay kong short title dito. Ano? Our Lord, Our Closest Friend. Because gusto kong makita ninyo that even though the Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate person, He's so high, and He is in heaven right now, He is God. We worship Him, we serve Him, yes. But He's also our closest friend. He's with us all the time through the Spirit of God dwelling in us. Hindi natin naiintindihan yung mga ganong bagay. At hindi natin na-experience because we don't understand. That's why we need to study doctrine. So that we can become a better person and we experience what it means to have relationships, especially the relationship with the Triune God. Eh, merong sinulat si John Owen about that. If you love reading difficult stuffs, you can look for the work of uh, John Owen entitled Commune with the Triune God. Doon, ina-expound ni John Owen kung ano yung ibig sabihin to have a relationship with God, the Father God, the Son God, the Holy Spirit, and to have communion with them. Okay? Observation. We can compare our friendships to concentric circles narrowing into a bosai. Ano ibig sabihin? Friendships are not the same in terms of specialness. Diba na? Totoo, meron tayong human friends. Diba? Both male and female. The same sex, the opposite sex. Marami tayong friends. We have friends inside the church. We have friends outside the church. We have friends in school. We have friends at work. We have friends in the marketplace. And so on and so forth. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, all of those friends share the same degree of specialness. Kaya kasi sinabing it's a concentric circle narrowing into a busay. Alam niyo yan, di ba? Yung sa dart, di ba? Merong outer circle hanggang sa may bullseye. Ganon din yung friendship natin. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong. That's reality. Di ba? 
At least sa akin, there are three types of friends. There are friends in the periphery. Ano ibig sabihin ng friends in the periphery? People we know but we keep a safe distance from. Eh, akilala natin ito, hindi lang sila acquaintance. Kasi pag sinabi mong acquaintance, di ba, alam mo lang na there is a person with that name that lives in that place, that works in that company. Ganun lang yung acquaintance, di ba? That mem- mem- miembro ng isang church na ganun. Kilala ko naman yun. That's acquaintance. That's not a friend. But there is a friend in that outer circle of the concentric circles. Kaibigan natin sila pero malayo. We keep away from them. We do not di ba? We do not keep a very close relationship with them. But they are friends. And then secondly, there are friends who are close but not intimate. So papasok na ngayon doon sa inner circle. Di ba? May mga friends tayo na people dear to us but we are selective with what we share with them. Di ba? Yung kaibigan ko naman siya. No? Magkasama kami sa church. Magkapitbahay kami. Di ba? Sometimes you go out to have coffee. Minsan, uh, ini-invite ko sila sa bahay. But, I am selective with what I share with them because there is at least, ano, there is this protection shell no, around us. Ayaw natin maging vulnerable sa kanila because pag sinabi na natin lahat ng sikreto natin sa kanila, we will leave ourselves uh, ready for alam mo yun? Being hurt. Pagka open na open ka, sigurado madali ka siyang, madali ka niyang masasaktan. So there are friends that we keep near us but selective. May protection pa rin tayo. Pero yung pinakahuli, I think, there are friends who really know us. Ito yung mga friends na wala na tayong protection. ba? Diba? Because we, we do not have any secrets kept in our relationship. Okay, I'm not just talking about spouses here, ah, na friends. Even non-spouses, best friends, di ba, male and female, we have those, ah, na meron, that we, we say all of the secrets we have. Hindi ko alam kung you have that special friend that you can even share your struggles with sin. Do you have that kind of friend? Maganda kung meron tayo lahat nun na pati yung sikreto kong kasalanan, sinasabi ko yun sa kanya. Note, ayan yung ano ko, yung categorization ko ng types of friends. Siguro yung iba, meron silang different categorization. Pero, somehow, that explains to us, in general, what friendship is. Di ba? They are not the same in specialness. That's what I meant. Note, Some of us are forced to acknowledge that we do not have one true friend. Someone we could go to with any problem knowing we would not be turned away. Yan yung sinasabi ko kanina na one true friend that knows everything about us. Some are not as open to their... Ito, gusto ko yung sinabi ng author, no? Doon sa... Sineshare ko sa inyong libro. I hope you can get a copy of that. Uh, paraphrase ko lang yung sinabi niya, no? Uh, naalala ko lang nung nire-review ko tong lesson. Sabi niya, Some are not as open to their spouses as they are naked in their beds. Ano giming nga sabihin nun? Diba? Even spouses. Minsan wala yung ganyang klase ng friendship. Diba? Ang mag-asawa, they can become naked in bed. And that's part of marriage. Okay? Marriage only, ha? Huh? Kung pa kayo mag-asawa, should not let your boyfriend, your fiancé, fiancé see your naked body. That's sin. Diba? You should not be even trying to touch their naked body hindi mo sila asawa that's sin or at least that starts the sin pero even husbands and wives di ba nangyayari yan eh minsan may mga asawang lalaki they do not 
tell their wives everything. <laughs> diba? Ganon din yung mga babae. They do not tell their husbands everything. <laughs> eh, tinatago pa rin. Alam mo yun, na just lang nakakaalam na yung kasalanan na yun o yung masamang bagay na yun sa kanya, itasama niya na sa libingan. Yung ganong klase ng ano. Kahit sa mag-asawa, nangyayari yan. So that is not the real friendship we're talking about here. Yung pinaka-intimate. Diba? Sometimes we are forced to accept that reality. Hindi ko naman sinasabi ng mga mag-asawa na gano'ng maghiwalay na. Hindi <laughs> na ibig sabihin. May mga reasons eh. You know? May mga reasons. So, it's up to the husband and wives to discuss that matter between themselves. Okay? So, gusto kong hatiin itong topic na ito into several important points. Number one, Friendship is often rooted in what we find admirable in another person. Tama yun, di ba? Nangyayari ito, di ba? This is not something that is theoretical. Totoo nangyayari yun. Ang friendship natin often nakaugat doon sa kagusto-gusto doon sa tao. Kaya ako siya gusto maging friend because he's the opposite of me, something like that. Or gusto ko siya maging friend because he's the same exact me. No? Kaya may mga dahilan eh kung bakit nagiging close sa mga tao sa isa't isa eh, no? Sabi nila, hindi. Birds of the same feather flock together. Yun lang daw ang ibig sabihin ng friendship. Pero hindi, sometimes, makikita mo yung friends, they are opposite in personality, but they are close friends. The point is, we start friendship because of what we like about that person. This is not wrong altogether, but it is often something that do not last. Itong friendship na nakabase dun sa gusto lang natin siya maging friend kasi gusto natin yung personality niya. Hindi yung mat- madalas nagtatagal yan. Diba? Observation. Some friendships are shallow because they are based on personality and not principle. Yan yung sinasabi ko dun. It's not altogether wrong, but it doesn't last. Why? Because it's based on personality and not principle. Maganda sana, yung friends natin, we are friends because we share the same principles. Lalo na yung principles na galing sa Bible. Yan ang magandang friendship. Diba? We can disagree on many things, but when we talk about what the Bible says, wala tayong magagawa but to agree. Ay magandang klase ng friendship. Diba? We like them, though we do not know them. Yan ang problema. Gusto natin yung mga taong ganito because of their personality, but we do not know them. Hindi natin salaga sila kilala. Now, this actually is encouraged by the social media. When we add a friend by a button, we click. Yan ang problema sa social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, ano pa ba? <laughs> marami ra yan, marami yan eh, no? Madali tayong mag-add ng friend kasi mag nakita mo, oh, add. A button we click and then we become friends. Alam mo, ang problema nga dyan, minsan nagiging friend natin yung isang tao kahit hindi natin siya nakikita in person. Oh, at sometimes nagiging friend natin yung mga yan even though it will be impossible for us to see them in person. Dahil andun sila sa malayong malayong lugar na ibang panig ng mundo. Pero we call them friends. Di ba? Yan ang problema. Di ba? This kind of shallow friendship is being encouraged by social media because it's popular. Because it's uh, comfortable. Because it's easy. Pero that is not friendship, my friends. That is not friendship. And this is the disadvantage of that type of friendship. These relationships are harmed and often destroyed when the friends reveal their flaws. Diba? Yung mga friends na yon, pag nakita mo, nagkaroon ng scandal, unfriend. <laughs> Dali lang eh. You know, unfriend button lang din ang katapat nun eh. Add friend. Pag ayaw mo na, unfriend. O pagka ayaw mo yung nakikita yung mga post niya, anong ginagawa mo? Unfollow. Or hide posts. Or, kung ayaw mo makita yung sinasabi niya sa GC, mute the GC. <laughs> or mute that person. <laughs> Hindi nitong uh, modern time na ito. It, 
tinatawag natin dito. It destroys the foundation of something which is which originated from God. It erodes it into something Alam niyo 'yun? Simple lang 'yan. Walang kwenta 'yan. Hindi ka na ng friendship, my friends. And sometimes, yung nakakalungkot, ano, uh, pag nakikita na natin yung hindi natin napapakinabangan sa tao na yon o makakasira na rin sa atin siya sa, sa reputation natin siya, iwanan na natin siya. Gusto ko yung sinabi ni Spurgeon sa kanyang, alam niyo, libre po ito sa internet, pwede niyo pong i-download in PDF form yung uh, sermon niya na untitled, The Unrivaled Friend. Download niyo yun, basahin niyo. Spend time with that sermon and you will learn a lot. Ito yung isa sa mga sinabi niya, gustong gusto ko talaga yan. Sabi niya, friends in this world are too often like the bees, yung mga babuyog, which swarm around the plants while they are covered with flowers and those flowers contain nectar to their honey. But let November send its biting frosts. The flowers are nipped and their friends, the bees, forsake them. So, ayan, di ba? Pagka mabulaklak na mabulaklak yung tao, <laughs> gusto, gusto natin nakatabi lagi sa kanya, loyal na loyal tayo sa kanya, bakit? Napapakinabangan natin eh. May binibigay sa ating pera, may binibigay sa ating benefit, mayroong protection, and so on and so forth. Close ako sa kanya, friends kami problema, pagka yung ibang tao na wala kang napapakinabangan, walang binibigay na pera sa'yo, di ka binibigyan ng pagkain, di ka binibigyan ng gifts for birthday mo or special occasions, you don't want them to be your friends. You put them in that outer circle. Friend mo sila, pero you keep away from them. That's sad, di ba? That happens inside the church. Na dapat sana bastion of true friendships. Because we are related to each other, not by flesh and blood, but we are related. We are related with each other by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every time I say that, I become passionate because that's hardcore reality, which we often neglect. If there will be best of friends among men among women that should be happening inside the church not outside sabi ni Paul we share the same faith we have one baptism we have one God but we are not close friends that's absurd isn't it and then when that happens People are, people like others in their greatest moments and betrays them when they fall. Pagka may nangyari na, hindi maganda, ayaw na natin, iwanan na natin sila. And sometimes, ang problema, sana nga lang, iiwanan mo na lang sila and you will cut your friendship with them. But the problem often is, when we go to other people, we spread lies. Diba? We spread lies about that person. Eh, kasi ganun yan eh. Kasi ganito yan eh. Kasi alam ko ganito yan. Kasi, di ba, friends kayo dati, tapos marami kayong alam sa isa't isa. And then you use all of those things against that person? What could be the worst kind of crime than that? Friends, church, we have so many things to repent about. We have so many things to ask for forgiveness about. Number two, true friendship is offered by Christ to the most undeserving. Diba tayo, we look for friends who are good, great, diba, mapapakinabangan, beautiful, admirable, yung mga tao na hahatakin tayo sa magandang sa magandang limelight and so on and so forth. Pero yung Panginoong Yeso Kristo, kinagawa niyang kaibigan sila ng mga sinusuka 
ng lipunan, sila ng mga ayaw, ng ibang tao. Tayo yun, mga undeserving. Kung alam lang natin kung sino talaga tayo sa harapan ng Diyos, we will not say that we are good persons. We will not say that we are better persons compared to others. Kung talaga naiintindihan natin ang kalagayan natin, in Christians included, hindi tayo magiging mayabang. Hindi tayo magmamalaki. Sabihin natin, I have nothing to boast about because I know myself and God knows me. Kaya lang tayo nagiging mayabang sa harapan ng tao kasi hindi naman nila nababasa yung isip at puso natin, di ba? Diyan na alam yung mga secrets natin. But the Lord knows. Jesus befriended those actually who were rejected by others. He sees beyond their social status. Tinan siya Matthew chapter 11 verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking and they say, Look at Him! These are the Pharisees, the religious leaders na pinupulaan ng Panginoong Isa Christo. Look at Him! Diba? A gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. Ang Panginoong Isa Christo, pinupulaan kaibigan ng mga maniningil ng buwis at mga makasalanan. Ito, ito yung categorization sa New Testament referring to those marginalized group. Diba? Hindi lang talaga actually tax collectors. And yung tax collectors and sinners, lahat yun ng mga outcast sa mata ng mga religious people. Diba? Yung mga prostitutes. Diba? Yung mga yan, maniningil ng buwis. Yung mga sumusuway sa kautusan. Yung mga hindi katulad nila, yan ang sinasabi nila ang tax collectors and sinners. Pero ang Panginoong Yeso Kristo, nilalapitan at kinakaibigan sila ng mga inaayawan ng mga religious leaders. Pagkat nakikita ng Panginoong Yeso Kristo ang worth ng isang tao beyond his social status, beyond his physical appearance, beyond his reputation. Nakikita ng Panginoon kung sino siya in his true person. At, hindi niya ginagamit yon against that person. Hindi ginagamit ni Jesus yon to, to keep away from that person. Lumalapit pa nga siya, di ba? Nakikisama pa nga siya. Ito ang, ang observation ko in relation to this and many other instances in the New Testament of the Lord Jesus Christ dealing with those people na ayaw ng society nila during that time. Friendship for Jesus was evangelistic. Friendship for Jesus was evangelistic. He befriends sinners because they need Him. Hindi po selfishness yon, hindi self-centeredness yung point na yon with relation to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because totoo naman yun. Kinakaibigan ng Panginoon ng mga makasalanan sapagkat siya lang ang tagapagligtas. At alam niya na siya lang ang tagapagligtas. That's why He goes out to them. He befriends them. Why? Because they need Him. He knows it. Alam niya eh. O, oh, gawin natin applicable sa mga Christians yan. Tayo yung mga nakaranas ng gospel truth, tayo yung naka-experience ng salvation, di ba dapat tayo yung lumalapit sa mga tao na ayaw ng iba? Why? Not because they need us, makasalanan din naman tayong katulad nila, but because they need our message. They need the gospel that we know. They need the gospel that we have. That's why we go to them. We befriend them. Akaibiganin natin sila. This happens outside the church. Point. Jesus did not come to simply offer friendship, but kinship. Ano ibig sabihin? Friendship rooted in family relationships. Ibig sabihin, gusto ni Yeso Cristo maging kaibigan ang mga iniligtas niya. Gusto ng Panginoong Iso Kristo maging kaibigan ng mga hindi na mapapahamak dahil sa Kanya. Yun ang maganda dyan, di ba? Try to, uh, try to meditate on that truth and then search the entire synoptic gospels including John and look at how the Lord Jesus Christ exemplified this in His life while on earth. Friendship for Him was evangelistic. Diba dapat friendship din natin evangelistic? Diba? Dapat si-share din natin yung gospel kasi and the best platform for that often is to 
start friendships with them. Be friends with them. Okay? And then it was God who, through Jesus Christ, initiated friendship with man. Diba? Yung incarnation ng Panginoong Heso Kristo was a mission of friendship. Kaya ang Panginoong Heso Kristo ay nagkatawang tao because He wants to become a friend to sinners. Ito mga verses, or actually, dalawang verses na gusto kong share sa inyo with regard to this. First is 2 Corinthians 5:18 to 19 Familiar tayo dito. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is Christ, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. That's God befriending sinners. Not sinners trying to become friends with God. Because the truth is, tayo mga makasalanan, we hate God. Especially those who are not Christians, right? They do not want to have any involvement with God. Why? Because when you become friend with God, you will obey God. You will submit to God's will. You will have God control your life. People don't want that. They don't want other people controlling them. That's why they hate God. That's why they say there's no God. They call themselves atheists. <laughs> the truth is they're just rebels who doesn't want to be involved with God. Revelation 3.20, ito, madalas na ginagamit ng verse na to, no? Na evangelistic. Sabi niya, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Ano sinasabi ng verse na yan? Di ba sinasabi, Ah, ang Panginoon ay nasa labas ng iyong pintuan, buksan mo. At pag pumasok siya sa'yo, magiging Christian ka. Pero sa akin, simple lang sinasabi ng verse, di ba? The Lord Jesus is the one who is initiating a relationship with us. And John used the image of food over the table and eating with other people to describe that close relationship with Jesus. But the point is, Jesus is the one knocking. Jesus is the one saying, I want to be your friend. Jesus is the one saying, I want to have this close relationship with you. Let Allow me to come in. Allow me to, to be inside your life and allow me to have this uh, food over the table fellowship with you. Ganun kasi yung friendship sa New Testament time. If you allow a person to come in your home and, the, and you allow him to be, to share with you the, the food on your table, that's closeness of relationship. Yun sinasabi dyan eh. Caution. I want to say so many things about this topic. Our idea of friendship should be doctrinal and not just experiential. Ano ibig sabihin? The Bible should govern our faith and even our relationships. Friendships, particularly. Of course, syempre, kasama dyan yung boyfriend-girlfriend, iba yung mga ikakasal na, yung mga mag-asawa, magulang sa anak. Diba? Diniscuss na natin sa Colossians yan. It's, it's who we are in Christ, according to the Bible, that should govern our relationship. What we believe, as God is telling us, should govern. Ayun dapat magdidikta sa ating relationships. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Oops, I'm sorry. Next thing, Jesus enjoyed spending time with them who are drawn to himself. So Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Now, the tax collectors and sinners, there you have it again, the category of the marginalized people, ayo ng community, were drawing, were all drawing near to Him. Di ba, ang Panginoong Yeso Christian siya nag-initiate ng friendship, and to those, di ba, called to become His by faith, are drawing near to Him. Of course, there are two types. May mga iba, gusto nila kay Jesus kasi ibang klase magturo, gumagawa ng miracles, and so on and so forth. Pero yung iba talaga lumalapit kay Jesus kasi niligtas ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng biyaya. Pero ang point is, this attraction is due to the difference of the person of Christ, not His personality. We love Jesus as our friend because of who He is. Person ni Jesus ang minamahal natin sa Kanya, hindi yung Kanyang personality. 
In fact, when you study the New Testament more carefully, including those prophecies in the Old Testament, many of the scholars say that Jesus was the serious type of person. And I, I, I think I've read Lloyd-Jones before saying that if you will look at Jesus in his physical attributes, you will see that he is older in the way he looks than in actual age. That's how serious he was as a person. Mukhang matanda na siya sa kanyang edad. Yung mukha niya kaysa sa kanyang edad. That's how serious he was. Probably because of the hardship of being a carpenter, no? Kasama na yung nabibilad ka sa araw and so on and so forth. Pero hindi yung personality niya eh. Di ba? Kung sino yung the person himself who is Jesus. Siya yun eh. Maganda ulit yung sinabi ni Spurgeon. Ayaw na mabasa niya. Maliit pala. Sabi niya, the love of man to man is sustained by something drawn from the object of love, but the love of Christ to us has its deep springs within himself. Diba? If it had to submit, subsist upon us and what we do and what we merit, ah, sabi ni Spurgeon, it would always be at the lowest conceivable ebb. But since it leaps up from the great deep of the divine heart, it never changes, and by His grace it never shall. Ano sinasabi niya? Christ's love for us is rooted not in us, but in Himself. Thus, it will never change. Nakaugat yung pagiging kaibigan ni Jesus sa atin, hindi dahil sa atin, kundi dahil sa Kanya. Because of Him. He befriends us because of Him. He befriends us because He knows that we need Him. Eh pag sa tao ang nagsabi no, ang sabihin natin napaka egocentric nitong tao na to. Sa kanya umiikot ang mundo. Pero kung sasabihin ni Jesus yun sa atin, hindi, hindi egocentrism yun. That's God-centered. That's biblical. That's good. That's true. Because He's God. At yun yung basis ng kanyang friendship, Himself. Kaya tinan mo, ang Panginoon natin, hindi magbabago sa atin yan because ang basis ng kanyang friendship sa atin, hindi yung galing natin, ganda natin, husay natin, kundi siya mismo. Ang kanyang pagiging Diyos. So kung pa-expound dyan, wala na tayong time. And then lastly, Jesus' friends are those to whom He has opened up His deepest purposes. This is one of the sweetest things about Jesus as our friend. He does not channel over to His disciples some of what the Father has told Him, he tells them everything they need to know. Alam mo yun, di ba? Ang Panginoon, hindi niya sinasabi sa atin yung mga bagay na, <laughs> alam mo yun, piling-pili, ingat na ingat. Hindi, lahat na kailangan nating malaman na galing sa Ama, sinabi niya sa atin. John 15 verse 15, No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. There you have it, Friends. Sabi niya, for all that I have heard from the Father, I have made known to you. That's sweet of the Lord Jesus Christ, di ba? Napaka-sweet ang Panginoon, napaka-dear friend. Because everything we need to know that came from His Father in heaven, sinabi niya sa atin. Implication. As friends of Jesus, we know what is kept secret to those who remain strangers to Him. Bakit? Kasi may Bible tayo. Binigyan niya sa atin ng Bible. We do not just have access to the Bible, but we understand what's in the Bible. Yun ang importante. Kahit naman hindi Christians may Bible, magaganda pa nga yung Bible nila eh, compared sa atin. Book form, I mean. Pero, yung laman ng Biblia, naiintindihan natin because we are friends with Jesus. The Spirit of God dwells us and He teaches us with the Word of God. So, Conclusion, <laughs> time. As we make our pilgrimage through this whole wide wilderness of a wretched world, we have our Lord Jesus as our steady, constant, and true friend. Okay? Lahat ng hinahanap natin sa isang ideal and perfect friend, we can only find it, we can only experience it, it is only real with Jesus Christ. Kaya kung hindi ka pa Christian ngayon, and you are boasting about a BFF that is not a real friend in this category. There's something above and beyond that kind of friendship that na you experience. Mo. And you can have Jesus as your friend. Anong sabi ng Bible? Magsisi ka at manampalataya ka sa Kanya. 
and you will become a friend of God. Okay? Wala na pong tayong time pa, pa, para sa entertaining ng questions. You can just submit your questions to me personally, direct message sa Facebook if you want, and then I'll try to answer them in Facebook also or in uh, actual study uh, at church. Okay, maraming salamat po. Yung mga nasa bahay, please stay tuned. Uh, ilang minuto lang because we exceeded time, and then we will immediately proceed with our morning service. Salamat po. sa inyo lahat. Welcome back to our uh, gathering. Uh, meron po tayong mga kasama dito sa ating church building ngayon. Medyo marami-rami rin po tayo dito. And of course, welcome back to those who are tuned in at home sa kanilang mga gadgets, tablets, or even television sets, computers. Welcome po kayo. Even friends here and abroad. Uh, salamat po at nakakasama namin kayo Sana po nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan Okay, so Malayong malayo pa po tayo Sa tinatawag na herd immunity Okay I hope you joined the discussion discussion Live discussion yesterday Of uh, Doc Jerry Balakwa uh, Lalo na sa mga maraming questions About the vaccines Ano, napakaganda ng kanyang discussion, very informative. Uh, if you missed the live, I think you can still uh, go and uh, watch the recorded version. Uh, panoorin niyo po yun kasi marami po kayong matututunan, baka maraming maliliwanagan sa inyong mga misconceptions about vaccination. Okay, sabi niya nga eh, kilala ko kung sino nagtanong eh, magpapabakuna ka ba, Doc? <laughs> sabi niya, Yes. No? Kahit na yung Sinovac ang dumating, magpapabakuna siya. Ano? Kahit na sinasabi ng iba 50%. Pero ang problema sa media, eh, no? sometimes nasi-sensationalize yung mga bagay na akala mo pangit, pero ang totoo hindi naman. Hindi ako expert sa vaccination, pero manood po kayo ng mga experts, makikita ninyo na marami sa mga misconceptions, sa, lalo na sa Facebook, masasagot talaga. Okay, kaya sana dumating na rin yung ay, ay, ang target nila eh, ngayong araw na to dumating yung unang batch ng vaccine from China. Minsan kahit dahil sa China galing, ayaw na nila. Tindi uh, na tao ngayon. Uh, malayong malayo pa tayo sa herd immunity so please make sure that you keep your face masks on and your face shield as well. Pasensya na po, ano? pero napapansin ko that some people, even here in our gathering, oh, nanonood din po yung iba dyan, ano? baka yung mga mamayang hapon pupunta, please wear your face shields all the time. Pagka nandito po tayo sa loob ng ating gathering. Ano? Yung iba, hindi na nagdadala ng face shield. Sorry to say, ano? pero that's protocol. Uh, Hindi po tayo lagi magpo-provide ng free face shield. Okay, dapat meron na tayong sarili nating face shield. Dapat nga nag invest na kayo sa mga magagandang face shield eh. Kasi baka hindi pa tayo matapos sa pandemic na ito or quarantine na ito eh. Baka 2022 or 2023 pa nagsosot pa tayo ng mask eh, tsaka face shield eh. Diba? So invest on a nice kind of face shield and wear them. Especially if you go outside and you gather in closed places like this. Please, alam ko pong mainit sa muka, kahit ako nagre-reklamo sa asawa ko, ang init sa muka ng face mask, tapos dadagdagan mo pa ng face shield. Diba? Eh, wala eh. Yan po talaga ang protection natin eh. So, magtitiis po talaga tayo. So, pag nandito po sa loob, ha, please make sure, meron po tayong mga volunteers na nandiyan si Ate Joanne, nandiyan si Ate Tin, Kung sasawain po kayo at papaalalahan ng kayo, magsuot kayo ng fail sheet, huwag po kayong ma-offend. Okay? Uh, pagka pinapaalalahanan po kayo, huwag po kayong magagalit. Ano? So, yan po ay protocol po natin. Okay? 
So kung ayaw po nating magsuot ng face shield at saka face mask, lalo na pag hindi Sunday, wag umalis ng bahay. <laughs> Yan lang ang solution doon. Ano, sigurado, hindi ka magsasot ng face shield niyan. Okay, so wala naman ako ibang mga importanteng announcement na hindi pa alam ng marami. Siguro, continuous reminder lang sa mga kapatira natin, friends natin here and abroad, uh, meron tayong regular online prayer meeting sa ating church at 7 p.m. Uh, we wait at least like 10 minutes, 15 minutes no, before starting. Uh, pwede po kayo mag-join sa amin at samahan niyo po kami sa ating pong pananalangin bilang isang church. Okay? And uh, wala si Pastor George ngayong umaga. I think uh, he's with uh, his entire family. Uh, uh, siya ay na-invite na magsalita sa Holiness in Jesus Christian Church dyan sa may Silang, Cavite uh, under the pastor under Pastor Dong uh, di ko alam kung kilala niyo siya so uh, he wanted to he wanted some assistance in the pulpit at this particular moment in their lives no so pag pray din natin sila do i cannot i i do not have the liberty to discuss any details aside from that uh, but we are ready to help them out at si pastor george nga ang uh, uh, nagpunta doon to help him. So pag-pray natin na makabalik din si Pastor George sa kanyang preaching doon, maging maayos. Pagbalik niya, mamayang hapon, he, also, he will also be preaching to us. Okay, pag-pray din natin yan. Okay, so meron tayong mga ongoing uh, online uh, fellowships, activities, di ba? No? Mga kababaihan, meron sila pag Saturday. Mga kalalakihan, I think meron din sila. Hindi ko lang alam alang araw nila. Ano? But they have it. Uh, Hindi ko alam kung meron yung mga singles. Hindi ko alam kung meron yung mga youth. Dapat meron. Diba? Napakadaling mag uh, video call ngayon and to pray together and to meditate on the word. Diba? Mapat meron. Mga youth, mga singles. I think yung youth meron silang, uh, yung iba meron yata silang parang study the book of Romans uh, through Brother Michael. No? So, Every other Saturday yata yun. Tama ba, Mike? Okay. So, if you want to join that, ask Kuya Mike. <laughs> uh, that's through the Book of Romans. Uh, yun lang po yung mga activities natin, ano. Uh, sana hindi tayo makamiss na mga yan dahil hindi naman tayo babiyahe. Diba, nasa bahay lang tayo. Mag-online mag ka lang sa app, eh. <laughs> yung iba nga, mag-online na lang sa app, di pa nga ginagawa. And that's a reflection of our devotion to God, isn't it? Diba, no? Kaya mo naman mag-online, kaya mo naman umate ng prayer meeting, kaya mo umate ng mga prayer time, Bible study online, pero ayaw mong gawin. Mas gusto mong manood ng anime, mas gusto mong manood ng Korean novela, mas gusto mong manood ng chismis, news. That's, that's a reflection of who you are as a Christian. No, let me be honest and straight with you guys. That's a reflection of your devotion to Jesus. That's a reflection of your level of maturity in the faith. Okay? Gusto nating batiin <laughs> mga nagdiriwang at magdiriwang ng kanilang kaarawan itong week na ito. Medyo marami-rami po sila. Number one, syempre namumula ni John ang aking panganay na anak, si Gewo John. Gewel anak. Happy birthday sa iyo sa March 2, this coming Tuesday. Uh, siya ay 16 years old na. No? Ah, God bless you, na. We love you. Uh, nanonood sila ngayon. Happy birthday sa iyo. And then, uh, March 2 din si Jessica Berongoy. Happy birthday din sa iyo, Jessica, sa Tuesday. And then, number three, Agnes Salvante. Wala si Ate Agnes, no? Ano ba si Ate? Ano ngayon? Wala rin. Happy birthday po sa iyo. Ate Agnes, uh, March 3, that's Wednesday. March 3 then Wednesday, birthday ni Abigail Espinola. Tama? Birthday niya, Espinola. Happy birthday kay Abigail. Ano na Kasama po nila. Ate Erlinda. Na? At ng kanyang papa. Happy birthday po sa iyo sa Wednesday. And then March 4, birthday din ni Janine Nicole Lavilla. I think ito yung panganay ni Nick. Nikki? 
no? Nikki Levilla. Happy birthday sa iyo, uh, Janine, sa Thursday. And then March 6, ito pa nga ni Ate Lynn, uh, Christina Lynn Corpus. Happy birthday sa iyo, Tin. Siya yung mother ni Lalay, uh, Raya, at saka nila Erisa. Okay, happy birthday sa iyo. And then, uh, tama ba? Baka mali ako ah. <laughs> Hindi ba ito si Tina Lynn? No? Kung nagkamali ako, sorry. If hindi ito si Tin na uh, panganay, ito yung uh, pangalawang anak na babae. <laughs> Medyo nalilito na rin ako. Ano. Happy birthday sa iyo. And then March 6, si GL Villarino. Happy birthday kay GL. Uh, ito na. Alam mo na. <laughs> Pumunta na doon sa takay. <laughs> Bulalo. Okay, happy birthday sa iyo, GL. March 6, sa Friday naman yan. Okay, and then... Uh, binabati rin natin ang magdiriwang ng kanilang marriage anniversary this coming Friday, March 6. Si Kuya Philip at saka si Ate Edith Vasquez. Happy marriage anniversary po sa inyo ha. Hindi ko na nilagay yung year, parang 1970-something eh. No? Yung wedding nila, 1971 or 1972. Okay. Happy marriage anniversary po sa inyo, Kuya Philip. Mas si Kuya Philip. Ayun, tsaka si Ate Edith. Okay, God bless you po. Okay, yun lang naman, ang announcements natin. Maliban na may nalimutan po ako, alam nyo po, pag hindi nakalista dito, sinasabi naman po namin ni Pastor George, hindi po namin sinasadya, ayan. Ah, ah, meron po tayong nag update ng record, so kung meron po kayong gustong ipalagay um, sa ating records ng church, you can uh, send a direct message to Macy. Bautista, asawa ni Deacon Alan. Siya ang nakikip ng ating records. Now you can search for her. Maricel Kwasay, yata ang pangalang gamit niya sa FB. And you can send there your birthday and your marriage anniversary. Okay? Kung hindi po natin uh, babanggit, hindi po namin sinasadya, wala po kami nilalagpasan. Kahapon yata, birthday ni Mark. Tama ba? Oh, Upbelated Mark, ah. Mark Biernes. Ayan, kasama natin. Birthday niya kahapon. Okay? Meron ba? Baka may nalinimutan po ah. Huwag kayong mahiya. Eh, Papipray lang naman natin kayo tapos mamaya pupuntahan. <laughs> ha? Meron pa? Ay, si Tora March... Ano po yun eh? Uh, March 7 ba si Tora? Talaga? Sa ano na yun? Sa Sunday. <laughs> Pero pati na rin natin si Tora. Okay, advance. Sabihin ni Pastor, inunahan ko siya sa pagbati kay Tora. Kasi by week po yung ginagawa natin dito. No? So a week starts at Sunday and then it ends at Saturday. So susunod na sana yun. Pero happy birthday sa iyo, Tora. Ha? Noon tayo sa bahay. <laughs> Baby's day out. My favorite ni Tora. Okay, so meron po ba tayong visitor ngayon? First timers? Wala? I, I don't see unfamiliar faces. Okay, welcome po kayong lahat. Welcome sa lahat ng nanonood. Uh, magkaroon po tayo maikling panahon ng katahimikan. Uh, magpray tayo sa Panginoon. Sabihin natin, Panginoon, forgive me and prepare me as I worship you through the preaching of the word uh, this morning. Para po sa ating unang hymn, inaanyahan ko po lahat na tumayo. Awitin po natin ang Wonderful Grace.
tayo sa Panginoon. O aming Diyos, kami ay nagpapakababa sa inyo sapagkat ang totoo hindi kami karapat dapat. We are sinners even though we are saved. May mga pagkakataon and sometimes it's happening very often that we decide to follow our own will, neglecting yours, and we are sinning. Patawarin niyo po kami, Panginoon. Itong inawit namin ay nagpapaalala ng kadakilaan ng inyong biyaya. Yung ginawa mo upang kami ay mabuhay. Yung ginawa mo upang kami mapatawad. Pero madalas ay nalilimutan namin ito pagka nananaing na yung aming gusto. Natutokso na kami ng kasalanan. Nalilimutan namin paalalahanan ng aming mga sarili of who we are because of who you are and what you have done. Pero maraming salamat because your relationship with us is rooted in yourself and not in us. Kaya hindi kayo nagbabago. Hindi nagbabago ang inyong pagmamahal sa amin. Hindi nagbabago ang inyong pag-unawa sa amin. Hindi nagbabago ang inyong desire to always draw us to yourself, to forgive us, to be sweet to us in our friendship, in our relationship. And often we hurt you because we choose not to be close to you. We choose to, we try to convince ourselves that we can hide things from you. Patawarin niyo po kami. Tulungan niyo po kami to establish a better relationship. Make us better Christians. Make us better children of God. Salamat po sa mga kapatiran who are here this morning and also watching us over sa kanilang mga bahay through their gadgets. Salamat po sa internet na ito because we can still listen to the preaching of the Word of God, though not in person. At naniniwala kami that your power is not limited because of time and space. Kaya mong gamitin na may kapangyarihan ang iyong salita. Bagamat ito ay naririnig even with a fraction of a second delay or even recorded. Because you are God. And you are, will accomplish your purposes in all things that you do. Maraming salamat po sa umagang ito for gathering us here. Bless us. Maraming salamat po sa opportunity ni Pastor George to minister to our brethren in Silang Cavite. Bless him. And bless the word as he delivers it to your people there. Uh, ingatan nyo rin po sa kanila, sila sa kanilang pagbalik dito sa San Pedro. Nagpapasalamat din po kami sa kalayaan na meron kami despite of this uh, quarantine. Salamat po because we can bring our Bibles, we can open them together as a church. Thank you because we can sing even with our masks on. Thank you because we can have fellowship kahit na may kiling panahon lang. Thank you Panginoon because you saved us. Pagpalain niyo po ang pangaral ng inyong salita ngayon. Sana po ay hayaan niyo ang inyong katotohanan ay may pahayag ng walang hadlang. At ito'y mahayag na may kapangyarihan at maluwalhati kayo sa katapos-tapusan. We would like to remember our brothers and sisters who are not feeling well today. Pagamati namin mababanggit ang lahat ng kanilang mga pangalan, we commit them to you and we ask for your blessing of health and recovery. A certain uh, grace, uh, kamag-anak nila Ati Yoli uh, is suffering from an ailment. Tulungan niyo po siya, pagpalain niyo po siya, bigyan niyo ang pangangailangan niya. Despite of the grieving of the family because of the lost loved one, bigay niyo po sa kanila ang higit nilang pangangailangan ng kaligtasan sa pamagitan ng Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Yung mga kasama namin dito, maaring may masamang pakiramdam, sipon, masakit ang ulo. Yung iba nasa bahay, they decided to stay home sapagkat siguro yung iba'y sinisinat, nilalagnat because of... Uh, the pabago-bagong panahon, ingatan niyo po sila at sana hindi maging hadlang ang pakikinig. Sa pakikinig ang kanilang nararamdaman. We also pray for our nation. As particularly, uh, today they are expecting the first batch of vaccines coming from China. Uh, sana po yung mga Pilipino, huwag silang magkaroon, huwag manaig sa kanila ang maling impormasyon 
o takot or doubt uh, kundi makita nila that uh, experts are doing their, their best to help the humanity right now uh, this, under this threat of the virus uh, but still, this is their decision. Alam namin that there will be risks of uh, adverse effects. Pero sabi ng mga experts that uh, kung meron man, ito'y panandalian lamang. At uh, they have uh, measures prepared uh, in, in case of emergencies. Sana Panginoon, uh, magkaroon na kami ng tinatawag na herd immunity. Uh, bagamat sa projection ng mga experts, medyo malayo pa, pero sana mapadali at hindi pa umabot ng isang taon o dalawang taon dahil ang aming economy also not only ours but even the rest of the world is badly affected and all of us will be hurt by this kung hindi po kami gagawa ng paraan not only to prevent ourselves from being infected but also makikipagtulungan sa government to acquire or to achieve this level of immunity para makabalik na kami sa aming normal na pamumuhay Tulungan nyo ang aming government officials to have wisdom in doing whatever is good for the people. Pagpalain nyo po ang bawat isa sa amin dito. Salamat sa mga magdiriwang at nagdiriwang ng kanilang kaarawan this week. This coming week, first week ng March, most of them. And also marriage anniversary, bless them, keep them safe always. At para sa mga hindi pamana ng palataya sa kanila, sana maalala nila sa panahon ng kanilang kaarawan at anniversaryo. Tani mga susunod na taon ay mga taong kasama na nila si Jesus sa kanilang buhay. Pagpalain niyo po ang bawat iglesia ang nagtitipon ngayon both physically and virtually at lahat kami ay susunod sana sa kalooban ninyong nakasulat sa inyong salita. Ito po ang dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Para po sa ating susunod na hima, awitin po natin ang Christ, our hope in life and death. Uh, tinatawagan po natin ng pansin ng mga kalalakihan to gather our offering for the Lord. Christ. 
Siguro ang isa sa mga pinakapamilyar at uh, mahal na mahal na istorya ng marami sa lumang tipanan ay ang patungkol kay Noah at sa dakilang baha. Ang mga bata gustong gusto ang uh, kwento na ito kung saan sinunod ng Diyos, uh, sinunod ng ang isang lalaki, ang pangalan ni Noah, ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng paggawa ng isang napakalaking arko o daong at uh, pagkatapos ay tinipo niya ang lahat ng mga hayop kasama ng kanyang pamilya doon sa loob bago dumating ang isang delubyong baha. Eh, usually that's how we summarize the story. Pero ang nangyari sa panahon ni Noah ay hindi lang magandang kwento para patulugin ng ating mga anak sa gabi. Ang nangyari sa buhay ni Noah, ng kanyang mga anak, at maging ng lahat ng tao sa kanyang henerasyon, ay hindi lang magandang topic na pag-usapan sa Kids Sunday School. Ang storya ni Noah at ng dakilang baha ay patungkol sa lahat ng tao sa ibabaw ng mundo. This story is not just an event that happened in the past, but it is a reality that keeps happening even today. Therefore, when you talk about the story of Noah and the Great Flood, it concerns all of us. People of that generation, and even people of our generation, and even in that generation to come. Pero pag pinag-aralan mo at binasa mo ang kwento na yan, patungkol kay Noah and the Great Flood, hindi, po, hindi mo makikita ang ipinapaliwanag dyan kung bakit ang tao ay nabubuhay sa kanyang pagiging makasalanan. No, you will not find it there. At hindi mo rin makikita sa story na yan kung paano pati yung mundo ay naapektuhan ng kasalanan ng tao. Pero alam niyo, ang isa sa mga magandang bagay patungkol sa story na ito, it will help us realize that man, especially in his sins, katulad ng mga tao sa nakalipas na mga panahon, hindi nagbabago. Walang nagbabago. Nothing is changing about man. At kasama doon sa hindi nagbabagong katotohanan sa ibabaw ng mundo, bagamat ang Diyos ay hindi limitado sa mundo na ito, kasama ang katotohanan na ang Diyos ay hindi nagbabago sa kanyang pasensya sa pamamagitan ng pag-aalay ng paghandog ng pag-asa sa mga taong nabubuhay sa kasalanan. The only solution, siguro pag pinag mo ang kasaysayan ng tao sa buong mundo, started in the garden, and then hanggang sa kasalukuyang panahon, 
May kita mo yung isang katotohanan, di ba? That man is persistent in his sinfulness. So persistent. Walang pagod sa paggawa ng masama ang tao. But the only solution to this persistence of man in his sins is the persistence of God in His graciousness. Yan ang gusto mong sabihin sa ating pag-aaral ngayon. The only solution to the persistent sinfulness of man is the persistent graciousness of God. Pasayin natin yung ating topic, uh, text, ating topic na pag-aaralan ngayon, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. You will have it on the screen, but you can also open your Bibles to follow. Genesis 6, 5 to 8, you will not read the entire story. Napakahaba po niyan. I will leave that to you and your family. Verse 5, nakita ng Panginoon na napakasama na ng tao sa lupa at ang bawat haka ng mga pag-iisip ng kanyang puso ay palagi na lamang masama. Nalungkot ang Panginoon sa kanyang nilalang o na kanyang nilalang ang tao sa lupa at nalumbay ang kanyang puso. Kaya sinabi ng Panginoon, lilipulin ko ang tao na aking nilalang sa ibabang ng lupa. Ang tao hayop ang mga gumagapang at ang mga ibon sa himpapawid sapagkat ako'y nalulungkot na nilalang ko sila. Verse 8, Subalit si Noe ay nakatagpo ng biyaya sa paningin ng Panginoon. Pagpalain ng Diyos ang pagkabasa ng kanyang salita. Two major points as usual. Number one, the never-changing condition of man in his sins. The never-changing condition of man in his sins. Second, the never-changing provision of God in his grace. The never-changing provision of God in his grace. So tingnan natin yung una. Ang Diyos at ang tao ay hindi nagbabago. Diba? Sa ibabaw ng mundo. Ano ang hindi nagbabago sa tao? Ang kanyang pagiging makasalanan. Ang story ni Noah is unique. Pwede nating sabihin it's one of a kind because it only happened once in the entire history of man. Ang Diyos sinabi niya mismo na hindi niya na wawasakin ang buong mundo sa pamamagitan ng baha. Hindi na natin babasahin pero you can find it there in Genesis chapter 9 verse 8 to 17. Kung saan, di ba, makikita niyo, binigay ng Diyos ang tanda ng kanyang pangako, ang rainbow. Every time that we will see the rainbow in the sky, di ba, often at the end of a storm or huge, where a huge amount of water poured down on the earth, and then you will see the rainbow. And that's a persistent sign of God's promise that He will no longer destroy the planet by flood. Yes, I believe that the flood described in Genesis chapter 6 to 8 is a historical flood. Totoong nangyari yan sa kasaysayan. And it is not just a local flood. Uh, may mga debate kasi, no? sabi ng ibang mga scholars, no, it only happened in that particular location kung saan nabuhay si Noah. And not the entire world. I believe it's a worldwide flood. The entire planet was submerged in water. Anong evidence ko? Hanggang akong time para discussin sa inyo ang lahat ng evidences, philosophical, historical, archaeological, maraming evidence na totoong nangyari ang baha na ito sa buong mundo. But I will only give you one, and for me this is the most important evidence of all. The Lord Jesus Himself believed that the flood did occur in the time of Noah. For me, that's the best ultimate proof na totoong nangyari ang flood. Tinan nyo doon sa Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 27. At kung paano, the Lord Jesus speaking, at kung paano ang nangyari sa mga araw ni Noe, ay gayon din naman ang mangyayari sa mga araw ng anak ng tao. Sila'y kumakain at umiinom, nag-aasawa at sila'y pinag-aasawa hanggang sa araw na pumasok sa daong si Noe at dumating ang baha at nilipol silang lahat. Now, anyone na tatanggi na totoong nangyari ang baha sa buong mundo sa panahon ni Noah, dapat itanggi niya rin ang lahat ng paniniwala niya kay Heso Kristo.
It is either naniniwala ka sa pagiging totoo ni Yesu Kristo at ng lahat ng kanyang sinabi na nakasulat sa Biblia, kasama na ang pagiging historical ng baha at ni Noah, or itatanggi mo ang lahat ng pinaniniwalaan mo patungkol kay Yesu Kristo. Yun lang naman yun. If you are a Christian and you believe in Jesus Christ and everything that He said, and all of them, totoo, then you will not deny na nangyari ang flood, worldwide flood in the time of Noah. But, ito yung gusto kong i-point out. The story of Noah tells us about the condition of man in this world, and this is not something which is unique to his own generation. Totoong unique yung worldwide flood. Hindi na mauulit yun. Diba? Makikita natin yung maraming mga flash floods, di ba? Sa pansambansanang natin, bagyong Yolanda, alam natin ang devastation na ginawa nito. Pero yung worldwide flood, hindi na mangyayari. God said it. Pero yung katotohanan na ang lahat ng taong nabubuhay sa ibabaw ng mundo, sa kanyang pagiging makasalanan, hindi lang totoo yan sa panahon ni Noah. Totoo yan hanggang sa panahon natin ngayon at totoo yan hanggang sa panahon na kahit patay na tayong lahat dito. At nagpapatuloy ang kasaysayan ng tao sa ibabaw ng mundo. Let me put it this way. Man in his sins never changes for the better. Man in his sins never changes for the better. This is not a pessimistic philosophy, my friends. Hindi ako negative na tao na wala ako nakikita nagbabago sa mundo. Ay, sinabi ko, man in his sins. Ang tao sa kanyang pagiging makasalanan, hindi nagbabago yan. Every generation, every part of history of man, you will see him doing what is evil in the eyes of God. See it for yourself. Di ba? Kahit sa panahon natin ngayon, na marami natin, last year, na lockdown tayo, na wala tayong ginawa, kundi, di ba? Manood sa YouTube, manood ang television, you will find it there. In social media, you will find it in the news, you will find the depravity of man worsening each day. Take, for example, homosexuality. Less than 100 years ago, homosexuality is considered a taboo in any kind of human civilization, even in a modern time of 100 years ago. Before, ang mga tao na may tinatawag na same-sex attraction and same-sex intimacy, anong ginagawa nila? Tinatago nila ito hanggang sila'y mamatay. 100 years ago. Pero ngayon, ang panahon natin na ito, ang mga tao with same-sex attraction, mga tao that have sexual relationship with the same sex, male to male, female to female, are going out into the open and fighting for their sins. So many, many times we've learned it from the news, even Christians are being persecuted and thrown into prison because homosexual people are being, what, treated badly according to them? They're not being treated as equal according to them? People are fighting for what is evil. This is the world. Recently, the trend is how many countries legalized same-sex union. Hindi pa po natin, di ko po po sinasama dito yung mga professing evangelical churches accepting and even ordaining homosexual ministers. Hindi ko alam kung narinig niyo yung story patungkol kay Max Lucado. Napanood niyo ba yan? Nakita niyo ba yan? Di ba? He was yung tinatawag na cancel uh, society you know, yung dahil meron siyang sinabi about against about same sex union before many 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 years ago ayos siyang pagsalitain sa isang nagpapakilalang evangelical church sa Amerika 
Bakit? Kasi marami doon homosexuals, even pastors and ministers. Lately, nag-apologize siya. Which is very sad. He was forced, di ba, to change his position because of popularity, because of fame. And this is a person who nagpapakilalang minister ng gospel. Today, 28 out of 195 countries, 14.36% of the world, legal sa kanila ang tinatawag na homosexual union. Ibig sabihin, pwede. Sinasangayunan ng batas. May protection ng batas ang mag-aasawang lalaki sa lalaki at babae sa babae. In our country, 61% of the entire population agrees na okay yon. 61% okay sa kanila yung homosexual union. Siguro a few more years, perhaps a generation from now, hindi tayo, ma- hindi tayo magugulat ng homosexual union will be allowed here in the Philippines as well. This is man in his sins. And he is never changing. Pero alam mo, ang legalization ng homosexual union is not really the issue. Now, bakit ko sinasabang hom- same-sex marriage, hindi, hindi same-sex marriage, kundi same-sex union or homosexual union? Because I believe that marriage is ordained by God and no man can change what it means. Marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Nothing can change that. So that, I would call it same-sex union or homosexual union. Period. Pero hindi issue dito yung nililegalize yung same-sex union or homosexual union. Kasi ang totoo, despite of the lack of law, kahit sa Pilipinas na walang batas para magsama ang isang lalaki at lalaki at babae sa babae, ano, nag enjoy sila. Napakaraming mga tao nag enjoy sa ganitong klase ng relationship, ng, re- ng sinful relationship. Now, what makes the sin of man horrible, however, is not how it's worsening every day, but how God looks at sin. Dito, sa kwento na ito ni Noah, pinapakita sa atin very seriously how God treats sin. Several things. Number one, no sin is hidden from God's sight. Tinan yung unang bahagi ng verse 5 sa ating text. Sabi niya, nakita ng Panginoon na napakasama na ng tao sa lupa. Nakita ng Panginoon. No sin is hidden in God's sight. Tama yung sinabi ng psalmist doon sa Psalm 139 verses 7 to 12. Di na natin babasahin. Pero nang sabi dyan, di ba? We cannot hide from God, including everything inside our minds and our hearts. We cannot fool God. Siguro pwede nating lokohin yung ating sarili. Wala naman nakakaalam ng ating ginagawang kasalanan. Pwede nating ignore yung conscience natin at sabihin natin okay lang yan. Walang masama dyan hanggat wala kang sinasaktang ibang tao. nag enjoy ka lang naman. But God will never forget. We can carry our sins to our graves. Tama yan. Pwede kang mamatay. Kasama na yung kasalanan mo. Walang tao makakaalam. But God knows every secrets. O lately na naman. Diba isang nagpapakilalang tao na ministro ng Ebanghelyo, si Ravi Zacharias. Nagawa niyang itago ang lahat ng kanyang mga sexual sins in the sight of man, but never in the sight of God. Ang kanyang mga sikretong kasalanan, basahin niyo po, ginawa naman pong publiko ang kanyang publikong kasalanan na tinago ng napakatagal na panahon. Baka ang iba sa atin dito ay tagasunod ni Ravi Zacharias. Kasi magaling naman talaga siya magsalita, magaling siya mag-defend ng faith. Pero sa likod pala ng lahat ng ito, ang lahat ng kanyang kasalanan. Sexual immorality, 
rape, Bakit inahayag ng Panginoon ngayon yung kanyang mga kasalanan? Patay na siya. Para sa ating mga buhay. Ano yung sinasabi ng Panginoon? Bakit inahayaan niyang expose ang kasalanan ng tao na to? Because God wants to tell us again and again that He takes our sins seriously. Kahit patay na. Imagine mo yan. God will expose the sin. And sometimes God is doing that kahit buhay. Di ba? Maraming maraming beses na tayo nakakita. Buhay pa lang, ina-expose na ng Panginoon. God takes sin seriously because nothing is hidden from His sight. Number two, sin produced within the mind and heart of man is something that is true ever since. Ang kasalanan ay napuproduce sa loob ng isip at puso ng tao. Tinan niyo yung second part ng verse 5. Sabi dyan, at ang bawat haka ng mga pag-iisip ng kanyang puso ay palagi na lamang masama. Tama ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. Nung kanyang sinabi, tinan sa Matthew chapter 15 verse 18, sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, Ngunit ang mga bagay na lumalabas sa bibig ay nagmumula sa puso at siyang nagpaparumi sa tao. Anong sinasabi dyan? Ang kasalanan ay hindi nililikha na galing sa labas. Ang kasalanan ay iniimpose. Di ba? galing sa loob. Hindi ito kasalanan ng produkto ng nangyayari sa labas. Ito ay kasalanan galing sa loob, sa isip at sa puso ng isang tao. Alam nyo, dahil totoo ito, ang kasalanan napaka-subtle, alam mo yun? At saka dangerous, sapagkat madalas, nalalaman na lang natin ang kasalanan na gawa na natin. Yung ganun siya kasatel, ganun siya katindi man loko sa tao. Nalalaman na lang natin yung kasalanan dahil nagawa na natin. Minsan nga, nalalaman na lang natin yung kasalanan kasi sinabi sa atin ng iba. Ganun katindi yung kasalanan. Sanay na sanay tayong gumawa ng kasalanan sa loob at isip natin na madalas ang ginagawa natin in response to the sin, kinukorek na lang natin, hindi natin pineprevent. Yun ang problema, di ba? Sa ating lahat yan, myself included, Lahat ng tao yan. Dahil sa sobrang, dahil sanay na tayo sa kasalanan natin, minsan, kinokorek na lang natin yung maling nagawa natin, hindi natin hiniiwasang gawin eh. That's the seriousness of sin that is produced inside of us. Pangatlo, we sin continually. Ang matindi sa kasalanan, hindi lang siya ginagawa sa loob ng isang tao, kundi ang kasalanan, walang katapusan. Nagkakasala ang tao na walang katapusan, walang patid. Tinan niyo yung first verse 5b ulit. Diba? At ang bawat haka ng mga pag-iisip ng kanyang puso ay palagi na lamang masama. This means that sin is an irremovable part of our nature. Tayo ay makasalanan. At tama yung sinabi ng psalmist sa Psalm 51 verse 5. From the New Living Translation, sabi ni David, For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Hindi po tayo gumagawa ng kasalanan, at dahil doon nagiging makasalanan, kundi tayo po'y gumagawa ng kasalanan dahil ang naturalesa natin makasalanan talaga tayo. Pinanganak tayong makasalanan. Hindi po tayo naging makasalanan dahil yung ating paligid ay masama. Hindi po tayo naging makasalanan dahil magulang natin ay masama. Hindi tayo makasalanan dahil pinapanood, binabasa natin, yung kinalaki nating environment ay masama. Hindi. Makasalanan tayo kasi nung bago pa tayo isinang, makasalanan na tayo. Ganun katindi ang kasalanan. At dahil dyan, nagpapatuloy tayo sa ating pagiging makasalanan. Alam mo, sapat na yan para makita natin, miserable ang isang tao sa kanyang kasalanan. Kasi gumagawa siya, kasalanan ng kanyang nature, makasalanan, tapos, di ba, palagi pa siyang gumagawa nito. Pangapat, God is grieved by our sins. Tinan niyo verse 6 ng ating text. And the Lord regretted that He had made man on the earth, and it grieved Him to His heart. This is from the ESV. Eh, problema, maraming mga students, ginagawang controversial ang verse na ito. Bakit? Because they are focusing on the phrase, God regretted creating man. 
Kasi nandun din sa second part ng verse 7, di ba? Sa ESV, sabi niyan, For I am sorry that I have made them. Ang ibig ba sabihin nito, nagbabago ang Diyos? Sabi nila, no? nagbabago ang Diyos. Kasi, nagsisi siya eh. <laughs> Ang focus ng maraming estudyante ng salita ng Diyos dun sa nagregret ang Panginoon at sorry siya dahil ginawa niya ang tao. Yung iba nga, sabi nila, eh siguro talagang hindi alam ng Diyos yung mga nangyayari sa tao at sa history niya, kaya naghihintay lang siya. At pag may nangyayari sa kalang siya, magre-respond. Ang tawag dyan, open theism. What can be more absurd than this teaching? Alam mo yung sinasabi lang ng natalata na ito, ang kasalanan ng tao may epekto sa Diyos. Hindi ang Diyos ay, bahala ka sa buhay mo, wala akong pakialam sa'yo kahit magpatuloy ka sa kasalanan. No, it takes the sin of man seriously. It brings pain to the heart of God. It hurts Him. It makes Him sad. It affects God. Pero hindi nagbabago ang Diyos. Siya yung nananatiling Diyos. He's infinite. He's unchangeable. Pero it doesn't mean that He will not react in whatever man is doing in His sins. Kasalanan, ginagawa tayo insensitive sa ibang tao. Kasama na dyan yung pakiramdam natin o yung pakiramdam nila. Wala na tayong pakialam. Nagiging sensitive tayo sa Diyos at the moment we choose to sin and at the moment we commit the sin. Insensitive tayo sa Diyos. Wala na tayong pakialam sa Kanya. Hindi na nga tayo natatakot eh. Kaya nga natin ginagawa yung kasalanan eh. Ganon kamisirable ang tao, ganon nakakaawa ang tao pag pinarusahan siya ng Diyos. Hindi niya pwedeng sabihin, I am not worthy of your punishment. Number five, God punishes both the sin and the sinner. Tinan yung first part ng verse seven. Kaya't sinabi ng Panginoon, lilipulin ko ang tao na aking nilalang sa ibabang ng lupa, ang tao, hayop, mga gumagapang, at ang mga ibon sa iyong papawid. Napakalinaw po dito na sinasabi sa atin at maging sa iba-ibang mga talata sa Biblia hindi na natin iisa-isahin na hindi hayaan ng Diyos ang may kasalanan na ma- hindi mapas- maparusahan. Paparusahan ng Diyos ang may kasalanan. God does not just hate the sin but even the sinner. Itatapon niya hindi lang yung hindi Christian sa impyerno kasama yung kasalanan niya doon. O hindi lang yung kasalanan ng isang hindi Christian pati yung hindi Christian itatapon sa impyerno yun. Hindi pinaghihiwalay ng Diyos. Biro mo, no? Pag naging Christian ka, nagbabago ang tingin ng Diyos. Bagamat ayaw pa rin at namumuhi ang Diyos sa kasalanan ng isang Christian, pero mahal niya yung Christian. Dinidisiplina niya yung Christian. Binabalik niya sa tamang daan, pero pag hindi Christian, tatapon sa impyerno. Kita mo kung ano yung ginawa ni Jesus? Binabago nang ginawa ni Jesus ang pagtingin ng tao sa isang ang tingin ng Diyos sa isang taong makasalanan. Kaya huwag tayong magpapabaya sa ating mga kasalanan. Kung tayong mananampalatay sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, yun lang ang paraan para matakasan natin ang parusa ng Diyos sa ating mga kasalanan. Let's go to the second point. The never-changing provision of God in His grace. There is good news There's no good news without the bad news. No, paulit-ulit ating sinasabi yan. Sa ating first major point, diniscuss natin ang bad news. Man never changes in his condition of being a sinner. He's getting worse every single day. Hindi siya nagsiswerve sa kanyang path of sinfulness. At ang problema pa dito, ang kanyang takbo ay napakabilis. Lagpas-lagpas pa sa speed limit. Pag pagdating sa paggawa ng kasalanan, patungo sa kapahamakan. At yan ang background ng ating good news. The unending sinfulness of man is the darkness where the light of God's offer of salvation shines so brightly. Ulitin ko po yan. The unending sinfulness of man is the darkness where the light of God's offer of salvation shines so brightly. 
ang tao mukhang hopeless dahil sa kanyang kasalanan pero ang totoong hindi hopeless ang tao dahil may Kristo Jesus sabi ni Apostle po sa Romans chapter 7 verse 24 sa Tagalog kahabag-habag na tao ako sino ang magliligtas sa akin mula sa katawang ito ng kamatayan ito yung natural reaction ng isang tao na iintindihan ng kanyang pagiging makasalanan sa harapan ng Diyos lalo na kung Christian ka dapat alam mo yung kasalanan mo di ba? Yung hindi nga alam pakikinig sa preaching, kasalanan yan. How much more worse is the situation of those who are not yet Christians? Di ba? Kung ang Kristiyano, ganito yung reaction niya, kahabag-habag na tawa ko, sabi ni Apostle Paul. Sino ang magliligtas sa akin mula sa katawan nito? E lalo pa kung Christian, hindi Christian yan. Eh, lalo na, kawawa. Pero, tinan yung verse 25a ng Romans chapter 7, sabi, Ngunit salamat sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Yeso Kristo na Panginoon natin. Anong sinasabi ni Apostle Paul? Yes, bagamat ang tao, kung iiwanan mo sa kanyang sarili, sa kanyang kasalanan miserable, wala siya kakayahan, pero merong pag-asa kay Yeso Kristo. Friends na nandito at friends na nanonood, Kung hayaan ng Diyos, mabuhay ka sa kasalanan mo, wala kang pag-asa. Pero ang ginawa ni Jesus, namatay siya. Para ikaw, na dapat mamatay sa kasalanan mo, pwede pang mabuhay. This is the gospel. Let me put it another way. Man may never change in his sinfulness, but God also never changes in his graciousness. Hindi nagbabago ang tao sa kanyang pagiging makasalanan, Pero ang Diyos hindi rin nagbabago sa kanyang pagiging mabiyaya at hindi siya tumitigil sa pag-aalok sa mga tao sa ibabaw ng mundo ng kaligtasan sa pamamagitan ng kanyang anak na si Yeso Kristo. So sila lamang na mga ayaw at tumatanggi sa Ebanghelyo ang nasa panganib ng matinding parusa ng Diyos na pangwalang hanggan. This is exactly what we can observe in the story of Noah. Alam niyo may parallel. There is undeniable parallel between his generation and ours. Let me put it in several things. Number one, there was worsening of sinfulness in Noah's time and so in ours. Diba? Lumalala yung kasalanan ng mga tao sa panahon ni Noah. Ganun din naman sa atin sa panahon natin eh. Lumalala ang kasalanan ng mga tao. Since sin is a part of the human nature after the fall of Adam, everyone sins not only continually but progressively. Hindi lang tayo laging nagkakasala, pero tumitindi ng tumitindi pa yung ginagawa. Na. Hindi lang simple ang kasalanan ng tao ngayon. Everyone is dissatisfied by simply sinning. Since man enjoys sin, alam mo kung ano ginagawa ng tao? He discovers new sins. Dahil gustong-gusto ng taong mag- gumawa ng kasalanan, gusto niya, hindi na lang yung paulit-ulit na kasalanan. Maggagawa siya ng bagong kasalanan, mas matinding kasalanan, getting worse and worse and worse. Ang isang tao, okay, may asawa, nag-enjoy siya sa kanyang asawa, pero dumarating yung point na ikita niya, mo ang ibang babae mas maganda kaysa sa aking asawa. Parang mas sexy. Kesa sa aking asawa, mas makinis kesa sa aking asawa at nakakaroon siya ng strong longing inside his heart for that woman or for that man. Anong tawag ng Bible doon? Covetousness. Ang matindi dito, yung covetousness na yan, pag nagsimula ng mag-aksyon ng isang tao, eh, alam na natin, kukuhanin niya na yung hindi niya dapat kuhanin. Kukuhanin niya na yung hindi naman pagmamayari ng iba dahil single yung babae o single yung lalaki. O kukuhanin niya yung pagmamayari ng iba dahil may asawa na yung lalaki, may asawa na yung babae. Ganun katindi. Ayaw lang ng isang uri ng kasalanan, gagawa ng marami. The worst kind of robbery is adultery. Tandaan mo niya. The worst kind of robbery is adultery. Pero ang sinfulness sa panahon ni Noah, isang bagay ang mapapansin ninyo, they, they have this growing this interest in spiritual matters. Pag binasa mo yung story ni Noah, hindi mo makikita dyan yung 
ano yung sitwasyon ng mga makasalanan ng panahon ni Noah? Bagamat may mga ilang suggestions, pero hindi malinaw kasi tinutukoy lang doon kung ano yung pinutos ng Diyos kay Noah na gawin at yung instruction siya patungkol sa pagpasok ng pamilya at ng mga hayo, pagdating ng bagyo, uh, ng flood, and so on and so forth. Pero hindi mo makikita dyan yung ibang mga bagay when it comes to what is happening among the people. Pero ang Panginoon may sinabi siya, ang Panginoong Yesus. Tignan, balikan natin Luke 17 verse 27. Sabi dyan, sila'y kumakain at umiinom, nag-aasawa at sila'y pinag-aasawa hanggang sa dumating ang araw na pumasok sa daong si Noe at ang baha at nalipol silang lahat. Sila'y kumakain at umiinom, nag-aasawa at sila'y pinag-aasawa. Sinasabi sa atin dito ng Panginoong Iso Kristo na sa panahon ni Noah, ang mga tao preoccupied sa mga bagay na pangkasalipang sanlibutan, nakalimutan na nila may kaluluwa sila. Di ba ganyan din ang mundo natin ngayon? Na? Ang mga tao, nagpapayaman, gumagawa na nga ng masama para yumaman, ayaw nila na maghirap, and so on and so forth. Hindi lang naman yun ang issue ng ano, kasamaan, marami pa. Pero nakikilimu- nakakalimutan nila, bakit hindi ko sinasabing masama yung kayamanan, mga kapatid, pero gusto mong sabihin, hindi lang yun ang importante sa buhay. May mas importante pa po sa kayamanan, at yun ay ang ating kalulawa, sapagkat kapag namatay ang isang tao, iwanan yung kayamanan niya, pero yung kalulawa niya harap sa Diyos. Ganun katindi yung kasal- ang kalulawa ng tao, ang kahalagahan nito. Hindi magbabago ang katayuan mo sa harapan ng Diyos kung mayamang ka. Ano sabi ng Panginoong Iso Kristo sa Matthew 16.26? And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worthy more than your soul? Pero sa panahon ni Noah, sa panahon natin ngayon, di ba? Anong ginagawa ng mga tao doon? Wala. Kasiyahan. Kayamanan. Halimutan nila, may kalulawa sila at harap sila sa Diyos. Pangalawa, there was impending judgment that was executed in Noah's time. And so in ours, merong banta ng hatol sa panahon ni Noah. At ganun din naman sa panahon natin ngayon. Ang Diyos, hindi lang siya nagbabanta. Ginagawa niya ang kanyang banta. Nagbanta siya sa panahon ni Noah, gugunawin niya sa pamamagitan ng baha ang mundo. Nangyari ba ang baha? Nangyari ang baha. In testimony ni Job, sa chapter 42 verse 2, hindi magbabago. Sabi diyan, alam kong magagawa mo ang lahat ng mga bagay at wala kang layunin na mahadlangan. Tinan niyo? Ang Diyos, hindi lang siya nagsasalita, ginagawa niya ang kanyang sinasabi. Marami ang nabigo na gawin ang kanilang pangako. <laughs> Kasama na tayo dyan. Pero ang Diyos, kailanman, hindi mabibigo sa kanyang sinabi. Sabi niya sa Numbers 23 verse 19, New Living Translation, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to, to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Huwag natin itutulad ang Diyos sa atin na sumisira sa pangako. Ang Diyos, pag sinabi niya, gagawin niya. Pag nagbanta siya sa kasalanan, gagawin niya. Pangatlo, at huli, there was continuous warning proclaimed in Noah's time and so in ours. Hindi niyo isang parehong nangyayari sa generation na sa generation natin yan. Patuloy na nagbibigay ng paalala ang Diyos. Bagamat dumating ang hatol ng baha sa mga tao sa panahon ni Noah, pero hindi ito dumating ng biglaan, ng sorpresa. Diba? May, merong, merong kasing, ano dito eh, merong... Uh, Please allow me to, to discuss this for a few more minutes. Sa Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, sabi dyan, at sinabi ng Panginoon, ang aking spirito hindi laging mananatili sa tao sapagkat sila laman, subalit ang kanyang mga araw ay magiging isang daan at dalawang pung taon. Alam mo, may dalawang interpretation dyan. Sabi ng iba, ang lifespan daw ng tao will not be more than 120 years after the flood. Yun yung isang interpretation. But there's a second interpretation. Alam nyo kung ano yun? It took 120 years before Noah finished the ark. Yun yung isang interpretation. 120 years niyang ginawa yung ark ko. Ano ibig sabihin nun? 120 years then na naghintay ang Diyos sa panahon ni Noah. 120 years then na nagbigay ng babala ang Diyos sa mga, pano- sa mga tao sa panahon ni Noah. 
120 years na sinasabi ng Diyos, magsisi kayo sa inyong kasalanan. Alam niyo, hindi naman imposible sa panahon ng pre-Noahic flood generation. Kasi yung tao doon nabubuhay ng lagpas sa isang millennium, eh, o kalahating millennium. Si Noah nga, di ba, sabi dyan, 600 years eh. 600 years old siya nung sumakay siya sa barko, ah, sa arko. So hindi imposible yung 100 years sa paghihintay. Pero ang point, God patiently warned the people in Noah's time about the impending judgment through the flood. Alam niyo, ginagawa pa rin ng Diyos yun ngayon, sa panahon natin. Walang sawa ang Diyos sa pagbibigay ng babala sa mga tao sa papaan ng paraan, sa pamagitan ng pangangaral ng Ebanghelyo. Alam niyo, sabi sa 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, wala sa screen natin yan, pero sabi doon, si Noah, diniscribe ni Peter na tagapangaral ng Ebanghelyo, herald of the gospel, herald of righteousness. This means that Noah preached to his generation by building the ark. Habang ginagawa, kung totoong 120, hindi, hindi naman imposible yung interpretation na yun, bagamat mas leaning ko yung first interpretation, pero hindi imposible na 120, habang nilalagay ang bawat tabla, Haligi dun sa arko na yon for 120 years. God is telling the people in His generation, there will come a time that there will be a huge flood. Kaya nga may ginagawang ganitong kalaking arko. At ang ibig sabihin ng sinuwa sa pamagitan ng paggawa ng malaking daong at sa pamagitan ng kanyang babala, pumasok kayo sa loob ng daong na ito pag natapos na. Kapagat yun lang ang paraan para maligtas kayo. 120 years. God is patiently doing it right now. Tinan yung sinabi. Sa 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 20, sapagkat si Kristo man ay minsan nagdusa dahil sa mga makasalanan, ang isang matuwid dahil sa mga di matuwid, upang kayo ay madala niya sa Diyos. Siya ay pinatay sa laman, ngunit binuhay sa Espiritu. Sa gayon din, siya ay pumunta at nangaral sa mga Espiritong nasa bilangguan na noon ay mga suwail na ang Diyos ay matyagang naghintay noong mga araw ni Noe habang ginagawa ang daong na noon ay kakaunti sa, maka, sa makatuwid ay walong kaluluwa ang naligtas sa pamamagitan ng tubig. What's the point? Nangaral ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Noe. Nangaral si Jesus sa pamamagitan ni Noe sa panahon niya. Walo lang ang naligtas. Pero may niligtas, hindi ba? At nangangaral ang Diyos, ang Panginoong Yeso Kristo sa panahon natin ngayon sa pamamagitan ng mga preachers ng gospel at meron siyang nililigtas. Hindi ba? Yun ang good news. Tinasabi ng mga nangangaral sa ngayon, wala nang baha, wala nang arko, pero may darating na mas matinding dilubyo ang paghatol ng Diyos at sila lamang napapasok kay Heso Kristo ang maliligtas sa dilubyo ng paghuhut, paghahatol ng Diyos. Dilubyo ng paghuhukom ng Diyos. Kaya kung wala kang kaugnayan kay Jesus, di ba? mapapahama ka, katulad ng mga tao na napahamak dahil hindi sila pumasok sa loob ng daong ni Noah. Kaya kung hindi ka pamanan ng parataya ngayon, oh, wala nang baha, pero walang nagbabago sa tao, kasama ka. Pero wala rin nagbabago sa pangako ng Diyos, maliligtas ka. Hindi na nga lang sa pamamagitan ng isang pisikal na daong, kundi sa pamamagitan ni Heso Kristong Panginoon. Manampalataya ka sa Kanya at maliligtas ka ngayon at sa pagdating ng araw ng dilubyo ng paghatol ng Diyos. Manalangin tayo. Panginoong Yesus, maraming salamat sa panahon na ito. Maraming salamat for allowing us to discuss this wonderful story. Madalas story lang para sa mga bata. But this is a story about us, all human beings in this current world. There are so many unchanging things about man but one thing is for sure, God is never changing in His graciousness. And He is waiting for man by His never changing and patiently and uh, unstoppable preaching of the gospel to all the world. Nangangaral ang ibang, ng Ibanghelyo at ililigtas niya ang mga hinirang niya. Sila ipapasok sa daong ni Yeso Kristo at sila ay magiging mana ng palataya at maliligtas sa dilubyo ng paghatol ng Diyos na darating pa lang. Sana yung mga hindi pa Christian dito, matakot sila sa kanilang sariling mga kasalanan. 
Natakot sila sa katotohanan ng hindi nila kayang iligtas ang kanilang sarili. Pero sana magtiwala rin sila kay Jesus na siyang totoong magliligtas sa amin. Ginawa na ang paraan. Hindi nga sa pamamagitan ng kahoy ng isang daong, kundi sa pamamagitan ng kahoy ng krus. Pinako si Jesus. Siya inilibing at muling nabuhay na nga sino mang titingin sa Kanya, magtitiwala sa Kanya, maliligtas sa dilubyo ng hatol ng Diyos. Magligtas nga po kayo ng mga hindi pa mana ng palataya. At ang mga mana ng palataya patuloy na patibayin sa katotohanan ng inyong salita. Ito po ang dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo para sa ating huling hymn. Uwitin po natin ang di ka namin nakilala. kalaliman ng mga kayamanan ng karunungan at ng kaalaman ng Diyos. Hindi masuri ang mga hatol niya at hindi masiyasat ang kanyang mga daan sapagat mula sa kanya at sa pamagitan niya at para sa kanya ang lahat ng mga bagay sumakanyanawa ang kaluwalatian magpakailanman. Amen.
Uh, kaupo na po tayo at uh, magpasalamat sa Panginoon for all the blessings that came from His Word. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon. Happy Lord's Day to all of you. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all